Peace. Hood Mystic representing www.hoodmystic.com. Today, we're dealing with this week in astrology. The new moon will be in Leo, July 23rd, around 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So with that being said, we are going to build upon that and give us a basic forecast. I'm just going to share this video on my page and get into it. Okay, now that that's done, the new moon in Leo. Now, the Le Leo is in, well, it's actually ruled by the sun, which gives this new moon more power, but it's also a fire sign, and the new moon, which is the sun and the moon conjunct, will also be conjunct Mars. So with that being said, we have to understand what Leo is and then understand the three planetary forces combined as one and then what should we do about it in the realms of esoteric astrology, all sign astrology. So we are dealing with the sun coming out of cancer where it's just like all of this family all of this earth life type of thing the cancer representing like a shell maybe a soft shell um and then we're moving into leo where we're just like walking out and really taking those steps that rite of passage towards our destiny uh where we're no longer having the desire to be led but to actually lead and take the take the lead role so we are transform transforming from a need-based person to a divinely led inspired person so leo facilitates that our direction our path and the sun is the individual the moon is our feelings and mars is our action so these three planets are together in leo and this is a new moon dedicated and the new moon also represents inti intentions what we want to manifest so the thing that is highlighted is our intentions to lead where do we want to lead ourselves where do we want to lead our tribe our family and things of that sort and so depending on your spiritual level you may deal with the level of family physical family uh you may be single and not deal with the family every day so it's more or less your habits or you may have a family but that family is more conducive to your div your divinity and your nature your your tribe so now as an individual you have to reconnect or deal with the level of ancestral connection spiritual connection and really get a hold of yourselves yeah uh, your past lives and the many lifetimes that you've lived on this plane uh try to culminate that and really see who you are as opposed to people around you projecting what they want you to be really take a hold of what it is that you want for yourself and and this is mars so mars is like this is how it is and people around you if you take that stance it might cause a backlash but knowing the energy you have to know the energy around you so it doesn't emotionally take you out of where you're actually supposed to be going um it's really important to let things go really let things flow because things generally will work out in your favor as long as you are doing what you know to be right uh so we have this cluster of planets in the first degree of leo squaring uranus and aries uh on its way out of aries actually and so what that what that is saying is our spiritual 
uh, our revolutionary self, our person that is waking up uh, to its reality is now having to incorporate that into his individual nature. And so that is a difficult thing because we have these habits that do not support where we are going because we are sometimes rigid in our belief systems and the things that we know and not really understanding that things are subject to change and so when things do change it kind of takes us out and wipes us out so ultimately using this energy to move forward and really deal with the future and what's to come and really letting go of the past uh, because this is a powerful placement and it is really set in the table for the solar eclipse that is going to happen with all of these planets again. So this is the first new moon and then the second new moon, which will also be in Leo, is actually going to be a solar eclipse. So a month from July 23rd, we will be experiencing the solar eclipse with the same energy. So this is more of a test and this is more of a setup. So in the world, what are we going to see? What are we going to see around us? Like, so I'm saying it's squaring Uranus and it's Mars squaring Uranus. So that is a lot and Aries is also a fire sign as well. So it is going to be hectic a hectic environment hectic in the forms of government the forms of media the forms of just everyday lives neighborhoods domestic situations things of that nature so and the reason that is is because people are not sure of what they truly want and so when this energy comes down it may pull you in different directions and you being pulled in those different directions may have you in a sense of this shit is crazy this shit is hectic and i can't handle this uh so what eases the hectic nature of the surroundings is actually knowing actually understand it actually healing the individual because like i said leo represents the individual the sun represents the individual and all of this and mars actually represents your actions the moon represents your feelings and so this is squaring which represents uh opposition or a challenge to uranus so with that being said one has to understand that at this point in time i have to take care of me and so and that and that is a major deal especially with everything around you going to shit so what what else is happening it is trining chiron and pisces so at the same time and understanding the individual understanding that you personally are responsible for a lot of things around you but you cannot actually do anything until you get your machine right you get your modalities together it's like you wanting to drive somewhere to help somebody but your car broke down so you sit and complain that you're not able to get there instead of actually doing the work and fixing your vehicle so you can actually get there. So this is a time for repair. This is a time for self-reflection, really burning away the shadows. If so much fire energy and, and the fire brings about the shadows, it brings about the smoke, it brings about the illusions, but you can put the things that rise up to the fire, to the flame, to actually burn it away. So you can actually move forward. It's a very spiritual time, a very powerful time if you're interested in higher consciousness and you're not really interested in like, you know, you, you sometimes have to really think about life 
in a way is to say, okay, if I get this nice car and I get this nice house and I get this dream job and I get this dream man or woman and I have 2.5 kids and a picket fence, then what? Uh, so generally we have to expand our minds besides, you know, just buying shit and actually really sit and understand what's the purpose of life and what's the purpose of you being on this earth why am i here on this earth and if you have that question this is the time to ask that question um because as a preparation for this new moon on the 21st and that is a friday uh mercury which is hermes which is thoth uh is conjunct the north node the north node in in leo as well and that is going to be a placement for the solar eclipse a month from now because mercury is going to go past it then come right back when it's time for the solar eclipse so this is a glimpse into the future so next friday be mindful of the situations and the conversations and the feelings that arise uh, these are serious things that we may want to take a look at and really start to work with our psychic self because what is mercury mercury is communication and people think that is communication between human beings but the essence of mercury the essence of thought the essence of hermes is communication to the divine and so that is the only planet that gives you access to the divine so that is spiritual communication so a spiritual communication with the North Node is really like a fortune teller. So if you're interested in accessing wealth or ideas or arts or relationships that can stimulate and bring about abundance, uh, if you seek, you shall find. And so actually being mindful of the things that we actually want to we may struggle with or searching for that thing that, you know, don't give up because really start to access the energy, actually work with the energy and really start making a necessary walk the walk, talk the talk, basically. But Mercury conjunct the North Node is a big deal. I mean, it is a huge deal and we can kind of feel it now and really a honest a honest statement that might seem far-fetched now is that where you are at this point a month from now is going to be completely different if you want to do the work if you really want to deal with the solar eclipse energy if you want to do your research and really understand what solar eclipse meant historically um what they mean uh and and really, if you personally want to access the energy to bring about a great transformation for yourself, um, this solar eclipse sits right on Leo and Virgo, like right on that line, August 21st. And so what is Leo and Virgo? Leo is the lion, which is our base self, our needs, our instincts, our ability to protect. Virgo is our ability to analyze, our ability to be a human being, to have visions, to have dreams and aspirations and want to create with the world around us. So if you look at the Sphinx, you will see um, common knowledge is that that's a man's face. But if you look up the history, the Sphinx is actually the face of Hatshepsut, which is a woman, which is the virgin, which is Virgo. And the lion is actually Leo, symbolizing your ability to bypass your needs and really start to access the level of what you want and really become magical beings like because the energy is available to really start to transform your consciousness up to what you're really capable of mentally emotionally and on the magical level um so really 
be that cause. Um, just one more point I want to get to before I end this video. Um, the day after the new moon, the 23rd, um, the 24th, Venus will oppose Saturn. And so Venus is in Gemini, Saturn is in Sagittarius, meaning that we are on a path. Sagittarius and Saturn is, we are on a path whether we like it or not. Venus in Gemini is you loving two things at the same time and not really sure. And that creates kind of a level of... It's like you can't have your cake and eat it too type of deal. And that's what we're currently in. But when it comes into opposition of Saturn and Sagittarius, it is showing us that, okay, I'm on a path and I can't have everything that I want. But the question to you, are, are you are you okay with not having everything that you want as long as you get what you truly want? Um and really being responsible for what you truly want. Like if you want to go left and right at the same time, you have to be responsible for that. And it's impossible to do that. You either have to go left or right. You cannot go left and right at the same time. So what can you actively pursue? And what you actively pursue is actually your path and understanding what you want and your path working is synonymous and that gets you over the hump because if you're not with if you're not understanding that knowledge what you want is not here today and that creates with venus being gemini it creates a level of sadness a depression because we just want what we want and everybody feels that everybody feels like fuck i just want what i want i know what it takes if, if i just had you know $20,000, I could get what I want, but I don't have the money to get what I want. And I, and I see what I want, but I can't do it. And that creates the frustration. But the only thing that we can do is actually put in the work and take the responsibility of putting in the work. Um, and this is a theme. So basically, if we put the plan down, if we put the work down, um, dealing with the energy, we bring it about at a, a, at a remarkable rate. We really surprise ourselves. We surprise our friends and family because we understand the energy and we work with the energy and the energy supports us. Um, so just a very, very powerful time. Um, once again, um, I enjoy the support. Uh, this is Hood Mystic, um, representing hoodmystic.com. This is the This Week in Astrology report. Like I said, this weekend is going to be crazy. My advice would be to really set your intentions and don't be afraid to want. Don't be afraid to desire. Um, don't be afraid to take chances, take risks. Um, don't be afraid to, you know, tell people how you feel own how you feel about people and don't let other people's reactions if somebody's reaction is going to change how you feel then you don't feel that way because you don't own your feelings you are allowing your feelings to be manipulated by other people's responses so really understand who you are whether this person's around that person's around um you just own yourself and you own your feelings um that's powerful but um, I'm wrapping up. I just appreciate everybody for sitting and watching um, because this is real nerdy and it's not like loving hip hop. So um, I appreciate it, but it's going to be here. So feel free to listen. Feel free to check out the site and feel free to message me or get in contact with me for a reading or anything of the sort. Um, super affordable super cool and people generally like him so um appreciate the feedback everybody have a wonderful rest of the weekend peace thank you as well